Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here. And today I'd like to take you on a tour of my home layout and show you some of the cool things that you may be able to implement in your layout at home and some other little things maybe you hadn't thought of. So guys, welcome to my home, welcome to my layout, and let's get started. Okay, we're gonna do a quick panoramic view of what the layout typically looks like when it's not fully set up and we'll set it up here while we're doing the layout tour. So first off, we start off looking towards the rail yard area and you can see the little town that's kind of up on the hillside. Um, then we move over here into the industrial area and right at this moment, we've got our grain turn staged over here. You can see where I've got the car cards. As we pan our way across, you can see all the way over to the grain elevator. And this is the entryway to the house. So we're gonna cover this up and we're gonna put in the first part of the layout, the first removable section. And you can kind of see over here the arm that holds the layout piece in place. Now let's go ahead and add the first section. The layout is stored up on top of what used to be part of an old layout that I had built in here before I had to put the car in the garage. We, uh, I've been storing the layout pieces up there or at least one piece up there. So we'll go ahead and get it down and we're gonna put it in place and just show how quick and easy this goes together. So now, this piece just slides into place right here. So now you can kind of see how the layout goes in place. And this just sits on the cantilever off the wall. And then on the base of the layout here, there's a small little shelf that everything sits on so I can get the bolts together. So let's go ahead and put that together. So I'm gonna reach under here, get the bolts. Now the way this works, this is just a standard um, lag bolt with a 3 8 thread and a nut and washer. And the hex hold the box or the square head here will help hold the screw in place so that when I'm tightening up the screws, everything lines up. And then I've got two different ones. The longer one goes towards the back and the other one goes towards the front. So we're gonna go ahead, and these holes are more or less lined up pretty quickly. Now we're gonna take our ratchet, we're gonna tighten the bolts all the way. All right, everything is tight and in place. Now you can see there's a big gap there behind the scenery where the door fits in and where the scenery also goes against the freezer there with the store soda storage up there. So we're gonna fix that. We have sections that are designed to be removable. This one's held in place with two just little bolts with wing nuts on them. And this is just enough to just hold it in place. There's no weight or anything else that's gonna be put on these. So now, once this is in place, usually take one of these 12 packs of sodas, just kind of push it up against there so that it maintains a flat, flush appearance. All right, now I'm gonna put the last piece up in place. I usually just use these quick clamps. These things are fantastic for temporary uh, things like putting up the uh, backdrop or in the case over here as you saw putting up the uh, skirting on the bottom of the layout for shooting videos. Now we come up and we check alignment on each end it looks good everything looks aligned so now we have a more or less finished backdrop over here that we can see. Okay, so now we have the light in the area. So now you can see this removable section, which is mostly just a switching lead. It just gives us somewhere to go. So we're about to put those buildings in place. 
and you can see that there's a gap here. Now in this gap, I have a small piece of rail that I've bent to fit, got it hiding under these cars here. And you can see here, the way this is done, there's some tape on the bottom that kind of helps hold the shape. And then on top of here, I've glued ballast on top in between the ties to help blend it into the scenery. And then on each end here, I have sliding rail joiners. These two are soldered in place so that that way, when I'm putting this bridge section of track in, we line it up to the track on this side. There we go. Then we simply drop it in place and we slide the rail joiners in. Now we cannot be relying on this for our track power. So what we're gonna do is down below, I have a six wire cable connector. And this is just automotive uh, shielding that you can get at any auto parts store. And then these are some old uh, Molex connectors or Jones connectors, I'm sorry. But they're coated, they line up, and they plug right in. Now this track, now this section of track power is hot and ready to go. So let's put the buildings in place. This building has a light inside of it that will cover when we get to the dark time on the layout. All right, this just fits right in there, place like that. Put that in. And now I'm gonna plug in this light into the NCE lighting kit, lighting device here. All right, now we're gonna get some cars. We're gonna distribute them around this section of the layout. Put the tractors out for sale. I will put him up on the highway here. That's the broken one, so that gets put in the back lot over here. Budweiser guy is delivering. The pickup truck is coming down the road here. It's a good place for it. And we have the Jeeps. We always have to have Jeeps on the way out. These guys will be going down the highway up here for now. All right, so in just a very short period of time, I've got this whole layout section here in place, ready to go. We got cars on the layout. This is the switching lead. There really isn't anything here, but it gives us some functionality uh, so we can do our switching. So let's set up the staging yard next. Okay, next up we have our staging yard, which you can see hanging here on the shelves built above. Um, it's not necessarily the most elegant, but it does what I needed to do to get it out of the way so I can put the car in the garage when needed. So we're gonna get this down, and then we're gonna move it over and put it across the entrance to the garage door. So first off, there's two bicycle rack hooks that are holding this in place. You can kind of see one of them right here sticking up and the other one's just behind right in here somewhere. So again, not real fancy, but it does the job and let's get it down. All right, now we're gonna put this piece across the entryway. So now again, I'm gonna take two of my bolts and nuts here and we're gonna put them through the holes on this side against the layout uh, because I don't actually have a shelf on that side over there. And this will help hold everything in place when we need it to go. Now on the other side, on the back side of this, I've got two temporary PVC pipe legs that I've built. On the other end here, I've got a pipe cap 
And then through there, I've got a T-nut with another one of these adjusting height screws so that that way I can make sure that the end is level every time. So we're gonna lay those over here in the corner. We're gonna grab this side, we're gonna put it in, line it up with the bolt holes, and then we'll put this other piece in place. And just like that, the section's in place. Then we can tighten the nuts and make sure everything's lined up and squared. And then we put our jumper piece of track in place. This is just a much longer piece because it's a sharper angle. So in order to span the gap, I had to build a longer piece of track. Goes into place like that. And there's that. Now the last thing is of course, I've got to put my jumper connector under here. Now we're locked in and in place. Now the last thing I have at the moment is temporary bumpers on the end of the staging yard because we don't want trains to run off the end. So for the moment, I've just got toothpicks that I'm jamming into place because my plan is to build another little six inch section just to give me an extra clearance for that one extra car that, that seems to always be the need. When it comes to staging, you can never have enough staging yard. So we'll put in the temporary toothpicks here. All right, now the staging yard's in place. Now the layout is fully connected. So let's take a walk through really quickly here. So as we come over here, you can see the toothpicks in place to keep everything from coming over the edge. Yes, I did do some basic scenery on the staging yard because why not? Um, I mean, it is it is a staging yard, but it is also a model. Um, we have our grade crossing here coming into the yard. Now we have our yard section. And we'll get into some of the detail here really quickly after our walkthrough. And then here's our stay our switching lead. You can see how that track kind of blends in. It doesn't draw your eye to this big railroad gap there. And then we go into the back section there and that's the end of the layout. So let's talk a little bit about layout construction first. Um, this layout is, this layout is all uh, foam based scenery, as you can kind of see here in this corner section. Um, it's layered foam on top of a cut plywood frame. And on this section, this is actually has the foam embedded into it. I think if I was to do it again, I would do the foam on top of the wood. Gives a little bit more rigidity and also uh, makes the joints a little cleaner as well. Um, but basically it's really light. This is just sitting on top of some uh, cantilevers off of the wall. So you can kind of see here where we have the cantilever going to the wall and then we have another piece coming up here. And then on the back of the, on the back of the wall here, I just have a one by four screwed to the wall and that acts as the back shelf. And then this is screwed to it and put in place. Now this one is only a couple of feet away from the end. And I'm gonna show you here where this one here is actually at the joint between the two modules. And so right here is a joint that I can take these apart and move them, separate them, and eventually this is planned to be the expansion joint. So when I get more space, I'll be able to build between here so that there's a little bit more of a run from the yard to the industrial area. Now, as many of you guys know, I also play hockey, so don't be afraid to use dual purpose and stuff. Um, underneath here, I took a, curtain, a, a closet rod, drilled it through the holes, 
and this is where I'll hang my gear after a game to dry up and the other cantilever should be right here yep and now when I was putting this piece in place you can see there's a small piece of wood screwed into there this acts as our shelf to help hold this section in place when I'm temporarily putting it together and then here we have our cable connector and you can see everything's just foam underneath of it now I do have two main bus wires that are running the track power. Um, I have not fully run the AC accessory bus, um, but I haven't really had to need to do it yet. Um, although I'm getting close as I'm adding more lights to everything. So let's talk a little bit about what the layout is set up for and what the purposes are. So here on the layout, this is a small little industrial switching yard. I do have an engine facility with a sanding tower and some lights, which we'll show you here at another time. But this just gives us a place where we can bring in, break down and, and build up trains, either to go to the industrial area or to head out into the staging yard. Now the staging yard typically isn't part of this. In theory, that's miles away, but Again, space is a factor, so we don't have a whole lot of it here. Um, yard ladder is a little tighter than I wanted it, but it does what it needs to do. You can kind of see right now, it's way over full. There's too many cars. I need to go through and do some cleaning up and uh, putting some stuff away. But typically your switching lead will come out here under the bridge that acts also as a scene divider and you can actually have technically somewhere around in here for your switching lead. Um, the idea is that when two people are operating one in the yard and then one in the industrial area, they just communicate back and forth and let each other know what they're doing. So, but with that, the trains would come in, it'll come in on the, and here and back in. And then the switcher will come over, break down the train, break it into a smaller train or sort the cars so that that way they can go into the industrial area. Um, one turn that I do is the grain turn that bypasses the yard and just goes straight to the grain elevator and does its work and then heads out. So usually the first jobs of the two operators is you have one doing the grain turn, the other doing a train here to build to bring over to the uh, industrial area. So now let's talk a little bit about the industrial area. Uh, first off here, we have a plastics manufacturing company. Um, one of my hockey heroes is Eddie Belfour. And so he actually started a whiskey company. And so I went online, grabbed his logos and put them on here, but it's a plastics plant. Um, and so this car, this will take a couple of box cars and a grain and a uh, hopper car for the plastic pellets. Um, in the back here is a Coca-Cola bottling plant. And you can see it's just a single spur right there. Um, I was going for creating an urban canyon here, so I did a, it turned out exactly the way I wanted it to. Uh, typically, this will take sugar and boxcars to get the uh, packaging materials out. Uh, Priority Warehouse, this is an interesting um, story here and we'll see if I can get the cars out of the way to just kind of show you this is a foam core building that I just built with some foam core but I built the doors just using foam core just so we can have something there until I get a chance to scratch build a plastic version but the doors are spaced out for either four 40 foot cars or three 50 foot or bigger cars so you can see right now I've got three 50 foot plus cars hidden here. So they line up to the doors. And so that way everything fits in there perfectly. But the reason it's called Priority Warehouse is it was named after the priority mailbox that I used to cut up to do a placeholder when I was laying the track out. And so since the priority mailbox didn't look very good there, I went ahead and took some foam core and quickly threw together a generic a warehouse looking building, but at some point that'll get replaced um, with everything else. 
Now over here I've got Benford tools. Of course we have have to do our ode to the tool man. Um, usually just takes a couple of box cars here and there. And then over in the edge where you can see the second GP15 is the switching lead that allows us to get into there with two cars and a locomotive. So moving over, we come over here to the grain elevator and this is a work in progress. I do still need to do some work on the grain elevator, but one neat little factor about this is you can kind of see there's a space here this is where the fuse box is. So in order to be able to access the fuse box, this is all removable and just moves out of the way. And this piece here is just held in place with Velcro. So that way I can get to the fuse box without having to tear the layout down if, if the need arises. Luckily it doesn't happen very often, but it's there if I need it. Then we just line everything up, put it back. We grab our grain elevator and it goes right back here where it needs to. Now, typically the grain elevator here can handle a lot more cars than what would typically be here during an op session. Traditionally, I'm only planning to have uh, four cars on the foreground track and then two cars on the back. So a total of six, even though I can put five cars here and four cars here, but typically when the grain is unloading, they move the cars down. There's a maximum of three cars here on this line to the grain elevator. And then I've got the four cars coming around. So every now and then when the industrial switcher comes into town, we'll move cars around on the grain elevator and move them from the unloading track to the, or the loading track, I'm sorry, from the loading track to the un, to the ready track or storage track. Now, typically this U23B wouldn't be here, so it's just thrown off to the side. But this is the feed mill. Typically, we'll get a grain, a, a, a covered hopper car, a couple of box cars, and maybe a flat car with uh, tractors on it to sell out front. And then, as we talked about here in the end, this is just the switching lead for purposes. Now all of these are covered. These things are all just painted to match. Um, this is a temporary house. I'm not living, I don't own this. And so there, everything has to be removable. So right now there's just tape on the door jam and spray painted over. And then this piece here is cut to fit around. And I figure, well, I'll just move and replace the uh, light switch panel because those are typically white. But that way when I move, I can just peel the paint down and it doesn't change the color. And that way everything's uh, painted up and matches so that when you're actually operating, you don't notice all the gaps there that you can see. So let's talk about lighting. Lighting of the layout is done with a dimmer switch. And underneath the layout here, you can see You can see how I have these lights where they'll dim so you can adjust the brilliance for what time of day you want to do. Um, these are LED daylight spectrum. And one of the other unique things that I did with this is the underside is also painted the sky blue because I found that when the wood color was all up under here, it was transmitting a brown color down. So in order to prevent that from happening, I went ahead and painted the whole underside with that sky blue. So here you can see the light bulbs that are in place. And then if you look closely next to it, you see the string of blue Christmas lights. Well, we're gonna talk about night operations here in a little bit, but this is set up for night operations. So I can plug in the Christmas lights, I'll get a blue glow over the town. And I'm in the process of going through and doing all the lights for everything so that way everything is lit up properly um, as you can see right here i've got a building missing um, this building is currently getting lights for the interior but then i've got the downtown district i've got some dpm got some walther's uh merchants row and then some scratch built buildings and then i have the car dealership and it all lights up and you can see the lot lights 
that I've got set up in there. Um, next up, as I said, when I'm working on getting lights, we'll do we'll cover a section in the dark. But one thing I do want to talk about here is the grade crossing. Um, this is a lit uh, activated grain crossing. It's using the Grade Crossing Pro from Logic Rail Technologies down in Texas. And I'm actually using track detection. And so I'm in the process of any of the cars that don't have sound car already are getting resistor wheel sets. And the way it's done is that you have the approach section that will uh, trigger when there's current sensed or detected. And then you have the island and the island is the section across the rails or, or across the road. And then you have the departure or the other approach. And all of these are de current detection. So when the train is coming, if there's current detected through there, um, it will trigger the lights to work. Now, one of the other things that is very unique about this was I scratch built this electrical cabinet, but if you look closely, there's a gap underneath of there. And that's because that, uh, this also houses the speaker for the bell. So the bell speaker is actually embedded in here. And so that gap allows the air to come out and the sound to come out so that you can hear it. So let's take a quick tour of the layout at night and we'll get some operations in here so we can see the trains running. Now, as you can see, operations at night really brings out a whole different element aspect of operating your layout. Now, in this particular scene, I've got a lot of the Woodland Scenics wooden pole lights with the extensions to create a yard atmosphere that is overseeing and illuminating the yard. Now, in this scene over here, we have the town dividing and I've got the Woodland Scenics lights lining up the street and then over the dealership, as I mentioned, we've got the lot lights that are a different shade, but also illuminating over the lot so people can see the cars they're gonna buy after hours. And on this particular one, I have the interior lit up as well. Now there's a building that goes here, as I mentioned before, it's getting some lights installed and will be ready to go, I don't know, sometime here in the next few weeks. But as I work to try to add lights, you can see there's the neon Coca-Cola sign on the Coca-Cola bottling plant. Now here you can see the Benford Tools building. And in the warehouse section, you can see that all the lights are on. And this has some uh, figures and so forth up in the front. And it's kind of hard to see, but behind it are actually just printed pictures looking like a bigger warehouse to help give an illusion of depth. Now on the other side of this, the Benford Tools building, the office front will have lights that will cycle on and off randomly, giving the illusion of animation and some operation inside. Um, I'm in the process of detailing the interior, so when the lights come on, you'll be able to see uh, some office furniture, people, and stuff like that, but at this moment in time, still working on it. So there's the upstairs, and the downstairs has a separate uh, light as well. So this just gives you an operation, some animation behind it. And this is using the NCE Illuminator package uh, decoder. It just runs off of track voltage. Now over here, we have one of the Woodland Scenics wooden poles that you can see here. But this one is actually done up as a gas powered light, 
So when the light comes on, you'll see it slowly gra graduate into uh, full brilliance. And you can see a couple of those over here on the highway as well. But what I wanted to show you was a neat little adaptation that I did. And here inside the house, this was the one that we plugged in when we were putting the layout together. And you can see the blue light flickering inside there. Well, that's on a random timer that will illuminate and kind of flicker off and on. But the idea behind that is to simulate a television. And so that way it looks like the TV is on. You can see action going on inside the rooms. And uh, so I thought that was another neat little feature. And that's using also the NCE illuminator as well. The last one of the lighting aspects that we do, of course, are the locomotives. Now, as we mentioned earlier, we have class lights and then we have headlight, backup light, and so forth on both ends. But on this one, we've also added the truck lights and we've illuminated the number boards so that that way we can have a little bit more realistic look when we're running and operating at night. Now, our operators, once I get all this uh, scheduled out and going, uh, the operators will have a small little mini flashlight on a uh, uncoupling rod so that they can see what they're doing at night, but also be able to use the uncoupling rod and won't be stabbing between cars at the dark to uh, uncouple all of the cars. Uh, we'll be able to uh, be able to see what's going on. So, so here's just a panoramic view kind of of what everything looks like. And the Christmas lights that I have on there for the blue illumination for the nighttime don't really show up well on camera, but you can get a pretty good idea of what it would look like. So as we work towards getting more lights installed, we'll be able to do full on night operations as time progresses. Now, one thing I wanna show you is how I've got these lights wired through here. So if you look closely, this is a foam-based layout and there's a hole, but you can see a styrene tube that's running through the middle. Now, what that is, is this allows the wires to go through this foam without catching or anything inside that might make it harder to put through. So now I just simply slide the connector in through the hole, the shrink tubing just kind of helps protect it. And then that just snuggles right up. And now I can plug in the two pin connector. So for more detailed information on how I've done this for all of my Woodland Scenics lighting, um, be sure to check out my personal YouTube video. Uh, my channel is Goalie George as one word. So I've got a step-by-step -step video on how I did that on our YouTube channel, on my personal YouTube channel. Now, when it comes to reliable operation, I wanted to make sure that the track work and the electrical was all done perfectly. So first off, all of my main uh, flex track is microengineering code 83. Um, I would have liked to go with code 70, but the part two of my track work is using all Pico uh, turnouts in their streamlined 83 which gave a very good detail on the front side. It also powered the frogs and they didn't have them in code 70. They've recently announced code 70, so I'm excited, but obviously this layout isn't gonna change. So uh, we'll have to think of that for the next one, but code 83, everything's you know fairly smaller. Uh, rail height, I would have liked, like I said, I would have liked to do code 70. But the thing I wanted to point out is when it comes to reliability, of course, the microengineering track is great, uh, looks fantastic. It's got scale sized uh, uh, track spikes and tie plates, and it looks great. The Pico turnouts, they operate flawlessly, they run well, they look well, and they have the Electro Frog. And the Electro Frog is important because every one of these uh, ground throws here are the caboose industries uh, power routing ground throws so when i throw the turnout you can see that that power connector moves back and forth and so that way it routes track power to the frog area and this whole section here in the middle so that way i don't have to rely on dead frogs or current keepers or anything like that to maintain power throughout the entire layout now, like I said, you notice every one of these turnout uh, ground throws here have that on there. They work well. And again, with using our figures to have to throw the turnout, it makes it feel more involved. 
Now over here in the yard section, you can see that there's a lot of tight space and I didn't feel like I could fit enough in there to be able to include the ground throws and a little bit better spacing. Um, so in this particular case, what I did is I used the blue point turnout motors, which are manually controlled using these knobs here on the end. So I can simply pull and push the, the connector rod and that'll throw the turnouts. Um, the numbers are left over from previous iterations, so don't worry about that. They have no orientation, but these are just craft knobs that you can get at the Michaels hardware stores or uh, uh, Hobby Lobby, places like that. And the connector rods are just, um, are just using uh, remote control servo and connector rods. And taking a look at this picture here, you can kind of see what that looks like underneath and the blue point turnouts. Now, again, this is all foam based scenery. So what I did was underneath, I milled out using a router, a perfect section of, of the foam so that I didn't have as far to reach. Then what I did was then mounted the blue point turnouts to a piece of masonite and then glued the masonite underneath using wood glue that was also foam safe so that that way it helped hold it in place. And then with the screws mounted to the uh, masonite that was cut to fit, I could mount that in and be fairly secure so that the ground throws and everything are very secure when it comes to throwing the turnouts. So that's kind of an overview of track work. Now guys, I hope this tour has been helpful for you. I know we've talked about a lot of things in here, so hopefully this has been helpful. If you can think of anything that you may have questions on, feel free to ask anytime. You can reach me at georgeb at soundtracks.com or you can check out my personal YouTube channel for some operation videos here on YouTube. Search for Goalie George as one word. Guys, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure hosting you and having you here visit my layout. Uh, so hope you guys will be able to uh, learn something from it. Thank you.